Hey everyone, welcome to Do It While You're Young. I'm Brett, and today we have Stephanie Kronemeyer Koppel. Stephanie started her own travel concierge company, Posh Voyage, where she helps travelers narrow down the infinite travel destinations and luxury hotel options worldwide. Stephanie is a perfect example of someone who has cracked the code for pursuing a career she's passionate about while still leaving plenty of time for travel. Here's what you're going to get out of watching today's interview. Learn how Stephanie used her network of friends, family, and previous jobs to launch her travel concierge company. Learn how Stephanie developed her business on nights and weekends while she was still employed, tweaking her business plan, and developing her network until she was ready to launch. Finally, you'll hear about the challenges Stephanie faced when launching her business and how she used tenacity and hard work to overcome them. For those viewers interested in starting a travel blog of your own, you'll be surprised at how easy it is to launch your site with hosting from our preferred provider, HostGator. You can run your own travel blog for as little as $4 a month. Enter DIYY.com backslash HostGator. You'll be taken to HostGator's site where you can use the coupon code DIYY discount to get your first month free. If you're looking for a little more hand holding in launching a travel blog or your own travel related business, consider our own ebook, How to Start a Travel Blog and Earn Your First Thousand Dollars. The book is over 60 pages, comprising seven chapters, including How to Avoid the Number One Mistake That Most People Make When Starting a Travel Blog, The Non Techie Guide to a Super Simple Site Launch, and Six Ways to Make Your First Thousand Dollars Online. You can read and take action on each step in as little as 30 minutes a day. Point your browser to doitwhileyouryoung.com backslash travel blog ebook or simply click on the link from our homepage where you'll get instant access to this ebook and free bonuses. We're proud of the passion and effort our writers put into the articles published on Do It While You're Young. Be sure to check out Tiffany and Greg's post on how to sail around the world on someone else's dollar. Tiffany and her husband Greg travel around the world on sailing yachts and keep a video blog of their adventures. Read about their experiences from California through Mexico and the South Pacific to New Zealand by going to this link. You can also find this link in the show notes. We're always looking for talented writers and photographers who want to contribute to the Dual Wire Young community. Your work will be seen by thousands in helping to promote your personal brand. Your goals are simply to start a conversation about a topic or issue that you're passionate about. We'd love to have you. Go to doitwhileyouryoung.com backslash travel writers wanted. You can find a link from our homepage in the upper right hand corner. That's all for announcements. Let's get started with Stephanie. Tell us a little bit about Posh Voyage and uh, what you're doing with this luxury travel concierge service. Yes, of course. Hi, Brett. Um, so Posh Voyage is a travel agency um, focused on concierge and blog. So basically what I do is I recommend the best hotels around the world by writing them on my blog and also plan best book itineraries for high-end clientele. Um, most of my clientele is looking for an unbelievable experience, something they've never done before. So what I do is I transform simple, you know, itineraries into unbelievable over the top experiences. Mm -hmm. And, um, so this niche that you've kind of carved out with travel concierge, uh, what are some of the advantages? Like, why would I want to go with a, a custom travel concierge service versus, you know, call up my, uh, my normal travel agent? So the biggest advantage of booking through Posh Voyage is the fact that I have firsthand experience. I divide my work year, let's say, in two. One of them is traveling around the world, getting to explore the hotels, getting all the ins and outs, speaking to the managers, creating those you know great contacts. And the other one is planning itineraries when I'm back home. So this allows you to have a better a better VIP service when you check in, a better room, um, all the inside knowledge of what restaurants to go to, what to order. So all that kind of information that for me is extremely important, mm -hmm. you get access to right off the bat when you book with me. Okay. And um, one of the biggest disadvantages I see um, by booking with other, let's say an Amex Centurion agent is the fact that they do not travel and the and they get all most of their information from the internet. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, kind of take me through. So basically, you do uh, front to back, start to finish. You manage the entire itinerary for the guest, right? 
Correct. Okay. So basically what they do is they send an inquiry through my website mm -hmm. and they fill out the dates they want to travel, the budget they're looking for, where are they going to be traveling to, and what do they want. Some clients, and these are my favorite um, inquiries, is when they just say, you know what, Stephanie, I want, I want you to build my honeymoon. I have no idea where I want to go. I trust you. And that's when I can go wild and basically, you know, put my thinking cap on and think of the best location, the best hotels, the best rooms where I want to send that client to. Um, it obviously depends. There's a million different hotels. There's a million different clients um, if they're going with their family, if they're going with their friends. So it always depends. So that's why it's a very personalized itinerary what I do. Okay. And I take care of the rooms, the hotel, the obviously the rooms, the flights, the restaurants, if they want to have, if they want to go to a ballet, if they want to go to a concert, everything. Mm -hmm. and, and do you use certain tools to, to connect? It sounds like you're already, before the person even, even travels, you're already engaging with them, asking them questions. Do you use tools like social media or, or what do you use to, to really kind of get in the mind of, of the, the um, customer? And uh, what are you using to generate new ideas or where to send them or um, interesting things to do while they're traveling? Well, definitely the thing that helps the most is when I travel. When I travel to the location, okay. I get to see the trends. I get to see, you know, let's say in the winter, I went to the Caribbean because I think that most of the people in the Northeast want to escape the winter and I see a trend happening. So I go and visit all the hotels. I go and see all the different things that, that they have to offer and the different events they have year round. So that's the way I get all my information and as well as, like I mentioned before, building the great relationships with all the managers and, you know, in, of the hotels, managers in the restaurants, managers um, in the tourism industry. So mm -hmm. that's the way I, I get access to the best, let's say, deals and best offers and the information of all there is to do. Sure, sure. And it sounds like you're getting great response, great feedback. Um, you, you mentioned that you're getting in, incredible, like I was blown away by the traffic numbers that you had coming to your site within, you know, six months of launching this service. Um, kind of take me through what you've done to be, to where you are today, as far as driving traffic to your site, uh, getting customers kind of in, in, into your process and, and engaging with them and turning them into, um, into paying customers. Well, the first thing I did in order to get customers was to email all my great contacts. Thank God all my years in the industry, I mean, not a lot, but um, around six or seven years in the industry has allowed me to get to have contacts in hotels, in the government, in different countries. So I first emailed all my friends, family, and those contacts just to let them know what I was doing. From then on, uh, the, the success of the company has basically been word of mouth. I do not believe in advertising um, the, t the type of company that I have just because it's supposed to be very unique and very exclusive. And the only way for me to get valued customers is, I believe, by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I was... Um... So you mentioned that in the 10 months, which it's been about 10 months that you've been running the service, your your bloggers, your visitors rather, went from zero to 5,000 the first few months, increased to 10,000, and then on up to 20,000 visitors for December alone. Well, are there yeah. particular strategies? You mentioned word of mouth, well, but there's got to be other ways that you're generating traffic and interest in this. In right? the beginning, I had no idea of how to run a website. I am not technological at all. I don't know anything about computer programming or whatsoever, but I engaged in, you know, classes of how to increase your visitors per month. And the way I did it is just by writing two to three articles per week. And it's amazing how you see, for example, in December, I wrote only one article that week because it was Christmas and New Year's and your visitor number just plunged mm -hmm. and so it's definitely uh it's you know it it has a lot to do with how work how hard you work sure. and how um you know how you engage in social media i i'm like i said i'm not technological but i use twitter i use 
um, Facebook, and I think those are the two main drivers of visitors to my website. Sure, sure. This is, I think would be a good opportunity to kind of t- take a step back, higher level in the travel industry. H- how do you think the travel industry has been affected by new media like Facebook and and Twitter, some of the other uh, uh, channels out there? So I think the new media has been affecting travel agents focused on more simple itineraries. Uh, Why I say that? Because Orbitz, Expedia, it's so easy to book and it's so cheap to book that I believe that the smaller agencies focused on that type of trips are disappearing very fast. Um, On the other hand, I believe that travel, luxury travel agencies have been increasing Why? Because our customers are still going to be using us because they need detailed information. They need a lot of logistics when it comes to travel and they want a personalized itinerary. The only difference is that they become very knowledgeable when it comes to new hotel, new destinations, new trends. So they're very savvy travelers. They still need us. So I, it's definitely more challenging for me to travel to, sorry, to plan travel for them, Mm -hmm. but it's, much more fun than to plan travel for somebody that, you know, has no clue of what they want to do or where where they want to go. Sure, sure. And kind of take me through, so you saw this trend of uh, personalized travel um, in your previous work prior to starting Posh Voyage. Kind of take me through, what were you doing before Posh Voyage that kind of led you down the path to starting this company? So I'm going to go way back. My family is half American, half Mexican, and my parents come from, you know, their families are from uh, Poland in Germany. So the fact that I had such an international background made me become very eager to travel since a young age. And when I started traveling and studying in Switzerland and China and Japan and uh Denmark, that just made me want to work in travel even more. Even though I studied finance and hotel management, I wanted to create experiences for people like me and have them have the same fun when they travel. So after graduating, um, I moved to New York and I got a job at Quintessentially Travel, building basically over the top itineraries and to very odd requests that I still think they're extremely funny from high end clientele in New York. One was I planned a bachelorette party to St. Bart's for her and she wanted her private jet to be painted in pink. Um, (laughs) Another one was that uh, a CEO of a tech company didn't know where we where he was going to spend the night that night because he had a couple meetings. So he made me book three presidential suites in three different countries in Europe. Mm-hmm. And obviously they were non refundable, um, but he didn't care. And um, it's just the kind of things that I had to make happen. I had to make the impossible happen basically when I was working in New York. And that allowed me to be very flexible mm-hmm. and to learn how to work with very discerning um clients and I absolutely loved it and that's when I started getting the idea of building something on my own because I just I wanted the liberty of getting my own clients and building um, whatever they wanted with no limitations Mm -hmm. Um, after that I moved to Boston to work for Rulala and help launch their private flash sale site which was fantastic obviously it was a big a big shift Uh, for what I wanted to do, but I think it was a great transitional period because I had the time to work on my business plan while working with them during the weekends and during, uh, you know, after work, which didn't let me sleep a lot, but um, it it was definitely rewarding when I, um, when I launched my website and, and, you know, left the, the company Rulala, which they were, you know, fantastic and super supportive about it. Take take us to that point that when you were, at Rulala and you decided, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to launch this. Take us through the, the couple weeks leading up to that and the couple weeks after when that, that site was live and what was that feeling like and what were some of the first steps that you took to really start growing that business? Well, I knew I wanted to start my own business and starting your own business requires a lot of capital. And it was mm-hmm. something that at the time, you know, I didn't have access to. So I said, okay, what is the best idea? What is the best thing I can do right now to start my business without 
you know, renting an office and so on. So I decided to build a website. And like I said, I had no clue of how to build a website. So I hired somebody to just basically make it look pretty. And I started writing articles before, long before I wanted to, to make it live. Um, I think that you need to work really hard to start something. And when you have, I just had a trigger. Um, I, I don't know what it was. I just knew that one day I woke up and I said, okay, I need to really work hard on it to make this happen. I don't know anything about technology, but I'm still going to go ahead and do it because if I don't start right now, I don't have any family. I don't have any very, you know, important things to tide me down and not make me be more, you know, a, more of a risk taker. So I just decided to do it. And I'm glad I did it because now it makes me believe that I can do bigger and better things. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so take us to those, those few weeks after you launched the site and you're, you're starting to uh, post on your blog, you're, you're starting to do guest blogging reach out to other um, influencers on the internet. Uh, how did you land those first few customers? Take us to what what that was like and and how hard you had to work what you had to do to win those first customers when you really you know maybe they knew you from rula la your previous experiences or maybe they didn't maybe they're just willing to take take a risk what um what did that well, look like um i would like to first say that when i started my business it only started as a blog mm -hmm. and i am not a writer either so it was very daunting mm -hmm. in the beginning to write and you know check what country was reading my my you know, crazy posts at the time that I thought they were. Mm -hmm. And slowly I started learning that, you know, I could do this. I could just travel the world, um, write articles and have people just, you know, read about my fun experiences. But then I started thinking, you know, I need to make money somehow mm -hmm. and I don't want to engage in advertising on my website. I just, it's not, I don't think it's very, I don't think it, it defines my website. So I wanted to stay away from advertising on, on Posh Voyage. And what I did is I said, you know what, I need to put in practice what I've been working on for six years. So I just decided to start the travel concierge tool. And that's when I started gaining most of my customers from the blog readers. Most of the people that read my blog were the ones emailing me to plan their travel. Very interesting. So, so you were able to convert your readers, your your audience, into paying customers based on what what kind of uh, articles, what kind of information were you sharing in your blog? I think the blog is the main driver because it motivates all my readers to travel, and the people that read it is a very specific market. Um, most of my, well, some of my favorite articles are, well. If you go to my blog, it's divided in three sections. One is the top five, which it can be top five, you know, amazing island resorts. Mm -hmm. uh, another one can be top five mancations, which is vac vacations for men, which is my personal favorite. And um, check that one out. I haven't read that yeah, one yet. You have to um, and invite your friends. <laughs> um, another, so that's one of them, which is called top five. Another one is the hotel of the week. So the hotel of the week that I find that it's just. Not necessarily, when I say luxury, it doesn't mean that it has to necessarily be expensive, but it has to be unique. It can be a small boutique hotel in the Berkshires, and it has that wow factor that I want to share with my readers. So those are the, the type of hotels I also feature, not only you know the most over-the-top expensive. Sure. And the last category on my blog menu is the itinerary of the month. So mm -hmm. the... You know, the, my favorite, let's say, itinerary I built for somebody of the month, I post it. And I have an extra thing where I just feature, you know, cool gadgets when traveling or just cool travel information. Mm -hmm. Sure. General interest stuff that um, your readers yeah. would, would find interesting. Yeah, I was um, I was perusing the, the hotel section. And I got to say, you do a great job capturing the wow factor. Some of those hotels look absolutely incredible. One of the things that uh, my fiance always says is never to quit my job because I get to travel most of the times for free. The hotels are kind enough to, you know, let me stay for free to sure. see if they can make the cut to, yeah. you know, being featured on the website. The fact that they, you know, 
help me or let me stay at their hotel doesn't mean necessarily that they're going to be featured on the website, which is a great way for me to provide unbiased and honest travel information. Sure, sure. Take us through uh, what some of the, the most memorable challenges were as you were building Posh Voyage. So, okay, well, I have two very noticeable challenges. One is that a lot of people associate travel agents to, you know, increasing a crazy amount of percentage mm -hmm. into the price and just overcharging people. And I, for me to educate people again and say, you know what, no, this is not the way it's supposed to be. Actually, I get better rates because I'm a certified travel agent. Also, I get better amenities because I have personal contacts with most of the general managers at the hotels. So changing that, that mindset was definitely very challenging. And most of the people that were, you know, the harshest were people close to me, which made it very, very difficult in the beginning, but definitely, you know, made me have that um, experience on explaining and that patience sure. on explaining. So now... I can do it with all my customers. Sure. And another one was, or this is a recent one, when planning travel for my clients, I pay a lot of attention to detail and I confirm things three times. I call the hotel, make sure it's the right room, make sure they have, you know, the bottle of champagne waiting for them. And I need to sometimes let go and just let the trip happen. But I just get very caught up in double, triple checking everything. And um, when they're traveling, I know where, exactly where they are. The, moment I wake up to, you know, I know where they're going to have dinner. So I call the restaurant and I think since it's the beginning, I get very, um, I'm a bit of a control freak. Mm -hmm. So I think that needs to slowly calm down once I start, you know, building trips for, for more clients. Sure. Are there certain qualities that you find in your personality that, um, that you believe have kind of been in uh, influenced your success and, and what sort of qualities, characteristics or, or skill set uh, someone that wants to start their own travel concierge business, what would, what would you recommend for them? Well, definitely you need to understand different cultures and the fact that I lived in different countries and speak three different languages makes me um, feel more in touch with the people when I travel and makes me understand the culture much better. Mm -hmm. And I feel that when you understand their language and culture, you can get very close to them and get to get to get things done your way. And um, so that's one of the biggest qualities I find in my personality. Um, another one is that I love to travel and I love to explore, you know, off the beaten path properties. And a lot of people, when they work in this in this um, industry, they just you know lay. I don't know, they just, for example, they only recommend Four Seasons Hotels or mm -hmm. they only recommend St. Regis. So they have uh, an area of comfort that they don't want to get out of and you need to be willing to take risks and you need to be willing to explore new areas where a lot of people do not travel to um, because that's, that's the way you create trends and that's the way your travelers are going to start believing in you that you are actually going out of your way to send them to the best possible destination. Sure, sure. And your advantage that you offer is that it's really firsthand knowledge from you, right? You enjoy going out there and exploring and finding those kind of little nooks and crannies and those special uh, accommodations that, that make the whole package kind of bring together, make it uh, ultra special, right? Yeah, the, I have to say that that is the best part of my job when I I to travel and um I mean, it's obviously not all leisure because I'm, I'm in meetings, you mm -hmm. know, back to back and trying to, you know, order room service to see if it's up to the standards that my clients would want to. So it's definitely, I'm always, I'm always working when I'm traveling, but it is a fun way of working. Sure, sure. Take us through some of the, uh, the big wins, the milestones, the successes that you've kind of stepped back and recognized as, hey, this is worth celebrating. This is something that... Um, I can be really proud of accomplishing. So when I started my blog, I um, and I decided to to do the travel concierge part. I mm -hmm. I thought it was just easy because all the agencies I've been working for, they didn't really ask for a lot of um, 
for a lot of things from you. And when I noticed that I had to become a certified travel agent with IATEN, um, it was a bit of a, a shock because I didn't know it was going to take so much effort to become, become certified. I had to take you know several tests. I had to have more than five years experience in the field. I had to have you know my company signed up with the government, with IRS and all these things that I had no clue about. So I think that was one of the biggest um, milestones for me when I got certified by IATAN, which means that you are a very legitimate um, travel agent and there are you know not a lot around the world. So that was mm. definitely my biggest sure. milestone. And the other one was to and travel for the CEO of one of the biggest tech companies in the world. Okay. Excellent. I wanted to back up. So IATAN, it's a, a industry recognized certification. Is it something that is required by all travel agents or it's really something to kind of put a, a feather in the hat and, and show potential customers that this is something that I take, you know, utmost seriousness and, and that um, you're going to get the top quality um, uh, service when, when you so work through me? There's two different ways of doing it when you're a small travel agent. Okay. What you can do is you can tie yourself to another bigger company that has a certification with IATEN, okay. uh, which you know that means that they you basically work for them, mm -hmm. but on your own schedule. Or you can go ahead and try and get certified on your own by IATEN. Every travel agency needs to have that certification, but when you're a small travel agency, there are ways of you you know, tying yourself to a bigger company that has that certification when, you know, you're you're too small or, you know, you don't have the time to get or the knowledge to get that certification. So what I did is I just locked myself in the room, studied um, and trying, you know, prayed that I got the certification and um, one day I woke up and I had it. So it was um, definitely um, a great success for me. Sure, sure. It was like you're going back to school, right? You had exams and tests and study guides and all that good stuff. So, well, great. Um, what? So, kind of tying things in, in here. What would you recommend to our listeners, based on your experiences, advice for folks that want to start their own travel business, folks that want to start their own uh, travel concierge service? What can you offer as uh, insight? Well, definitely don't be afraid to start your own thing. I feel like mm -hmm. that was the biggest drawback for me in the beginning because I just kept thinking, how on earth am I going to build something? How am I going to start something? I, it's just so much easier to work for somebody. It's so much easier to work in a company. Mm -hmm. um, so just you know, take the risk and study a lot make sure you have the knowledge to give the best possible service because that competitive advantage is what's going to make you, you know, different from the rest because there are millions of travel agencies and there are millions of luxury travel agencies but the fact that I have that advantage of traveling all the time and having great contacts in the industry I feel that, you know, separates me from the rest and just having something unique about you and, um, you know, just do it while you're young. Sure, absolutely. Thanks for tying that in. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to do more general interest here as, as far as uh, your favorite travel because it sounds like you've, you've been quite a few places. What, what, have, uh, what have been your favorite travel memories? Um, so my favorite travel memory is my family loves to go to Bora Bora during New Year's and it, I don't think there's any other place in the world so enchanting like this, this spot. It's one of the most stunning places with the most unbelievable hotels um, that I've ever been to and the fact that I went there with my whole family and just had the best time diving with sharks and you know, just fishing and swimming and snorkeling was, I think, one of the most memorable trips I've ever done. Um, another one is going to my one of my favorite hotels in Brazil, in Florianópolis. It's called Ponta dos Ganchos, and I went there with my fiancé, and it was probably one of the most romantic trips I've ever taken in my life. Excellent. 
Yeah, I know Bora Bora. I've had some friends that have been there. It's not the easiest to get to, but it sounds like it's well worth yeah, worth the it's, effort, it's, right? It's quite a hike to get yeah. there because if you're, you know, in the northeast, it's it's pretty difficult because you need to spend the night in LA, then you need to spend the night yeah. in Papit, and then you need to take a float plane, and then it's it's quite a, a journey. But I feel that that's what what makes it unique. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Well, good. Well, I've really enjoyed talking with you. Um, just so that everyone can find you, find your blog, uh, find where you're at on the internet. What's the easiest way to connect with you? Just through the blog. If you can go to the website, it's www.poshvoyage.com. And my email address is Stephanie, and that's spelled with an F as in Frank, uh, different, and Stephanie at poshvoyage.com. Sure. And just for all our viewers, I can uh, include some of those links at the bottom uh, below the video for, uh, for reference. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Stephanie. Take care. Well, thank you very much and have a great day and um, keep traveling. Let me know if you need any help. Absolutely. Take care. Okay. Take care. Goodbye. Bye. That does it for this installment of Dual Warrior Young's Work and Travel series. Be sure to check out Stephanie's blog over at poshvoyage.com. She's got some incredible pictures of accommodations there. Before you go, please take 30 seconds to share this video with family and friends. It's as easy as clicking one of the share buttons below. Finally, are you interested in seeing us interview an entrepreneur, travel professional, or someone else you think would make for a great interview? Leave a comment below and suggest an interview, or simply leave a comment telling us how we're doing.